Welcome back. It is 1501. And last year we had Mortimer get married to Siobhan she, and become a Viscount. So now this is his Viscountess. But Siobhan already had a daughter named Isla and uh, she is going to enter the marriage market pretty much right away and um siobhan has also taken over raising the children alice is unhappy in her marriage all the goth babies are born and we are just moving right along with this century so historically arthur is going to marry Catherine this year so royal wedding uh, and then we have some birthdays including our percival so i'm a little worried but it's going to be okay so let's start with vivian goth i'm gonna have to get used to these new roles because i can't remember them at all no 7 14 or 19 Oh, no. All right. Well, Vivian Goth just passed away. We have lost a goth child, but there's plenty of them, so I'm not super worried about it. Now, our Percival. No, two, four, six. Okay, Percival, you can do this. <gasps> no! Oh, my gosh. You guys. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> we have to... Okay, we'll plead for him, obviously, if we can, because Grim has just not been letting us... plead at all and it's so frustrating um oh my gosh okay so anyway um oh my gosh okay let's move on randolph the third no seven or 13 oh my gosh what is going on with these dice you guys oh hello um what is going on with these dice okay hold on is randolph hold on Randolph is Randolph the only no okay Randolph has two younger brothers so the land grab family name is still okay I cannot believe that just happened also Randolph would have been a really good option for Isla oh my gosh okay anyway so now we have Alexander and Constance Goth they have to get high a seven or higher okay you you have to behave oh my gosh <laughs> What is going on? Okay, okay. Well, Constance survived. Alexander did not. Um, Alexander is a lord, right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So the little baby boy is going to become the lord. Oh, and then Randolph is dying. So also that means that Randolph... So Randolph, the elder, is finally dying. So um, this Randolph is, is finally going to become the baron. This guy has been alive forever. Um, but oh my gosh, oh my goodness, I cannot believe this. Oh, okay. These dice are being hard on me today, all but one person. Okay, well, anyway, uh, let's hop into the game. So firstly, I want to introduce you to the Dubois family. The Dubois family has been noble in France for years, but lately Christian has been slowly acting irrationally. Anika doesn't know what to do about her husband. She does the best to hide his state from their ch four children. Unfortunately, Christian has been rambling to the twins, and Heath does his best to keep Kennedy happy. Kennedy and Heath were both born and barely survived, which has kept them close. Um, actually... I'm so sorry. I don't. I didn't write in who who did this. Anyway, if you want to have Sims for me, you can add them to the hashtag MeganPlaysSims, and I will find them here. Um, and then I've just been favoriting them when I use them, so that I know which ones I've used. Where is? Where are they? Oh, I gotta include custom content. It's my bad. Uh, who made the Dubois family? Do you see them or am I hallucinating? Here they are. Okay. Mad Mermaid 713 had ori originally made them. So thank you. Should add that in. Let me just come over here before I forget. Oops. There we go. So yeah, here is the family after their makeovers. Here's Christian. He is erratic, which goes with the um, the story there. I did also want to say that I made this family. I couldn't fit it in because his name's so long, but um, he since they're from France and everything, I made him a marquis. So that makes his wife the marchioness, 
and their son, a future title holder, which is someone that I wanted to add in for um, dealing with, you know, future marriage stuff. Because honestly, I think that Siobhan is only going to want the best for her daughter. So I think that she's going to push really hard um, for Heath, who is loyal and proper and like all accounts a good boy. So we'll see where that goes. So that is the family and that we are introducing. And now I'm going to actually get into the game. You know, sometimes I just want to introduce families after I already filmed the intro. So <laughs> anyway, um, we are going to start off with having just everyone doing their thing. So um, Siobhan is, you know, starting to wrangle the children. They're all doing their homework. The toddlers are working on their last two toddler skills. I think we have uh, Percival working on his potty skill and then Eleanor working on her um, thinking skill. And then we have uh, Mortimer working and we have Isla finishing up the aspiration by like painting and stuff. So she already has the skills. She just needs to actually do the thing. So that is why that's happening with her. And then the boys are both, they both have the mental uh, aspiration. And also we have Siobhan who ha is... I forget what her aspiration is exactly, but it's one of the family aspirations. And so she wants to read to a child. Also, Gabriel wants to be read to. So we're just going to connect those two. She's going to be reading Gabriel books. She's probably also trying to, you know, be extra nice to Gabriel because he's the future, like, head of the household. And then we're just talking about, like, Lady Whistledown came in. And Isla, actually, it says that, like, Lady Whistledown is like, oh, like, nobody ha is interested in her yet. Like, calm down. She just got presented. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to continue to read to Gabriel and do all that. And um, she actually wants to have a child. So there might be a room in the household later. Who knows? Um, anyway, so we are going to also make resolutions for New Year's Eve. Uh, we actually are not going to do the countdown to midnight. Obviously, we don't have TV, so we can't do that. And then we are going to continue on with everybody's stuff. So just kind of, you know, normal, everyday living, taking a little break from some of the drama before we get back into it. <laughs> so when Mortimer gets home from work, we are going to have a coming out ball for Isla. She is going to have a little party where we're going to introduce her to all of the eligible bachelors. So let's have him also make a resolution. Don't call me right now, Robert. <laughs> but anyway, so again, trying to read. It's taking like four tries, seriously. But anyway, so we are going to have her do one last painting. Before that, she's only she's only at three of five. We got thinking level four for Eleanor. Everyone is doing pretty well. So there's that. And then we are going to host the coming out ball, which as it turned out is like the last thing. So yes, we are having a ball for Isla. They are very excited to introduce her to the guys. I'm going to start talking to you about each man and what is going on with them. We actually are not going to include Tobias Allison because he is significantly older than everyone else. And I just feel like he would not be an option. So I'm not going to include him. He is not someone that, you know, she would be introduced to because he is a lot older than she is. So... He's probably like coming up on 20 years older than she is. So it's, it's really not a thing. So anyway, I'm going to come and look at the guys. So we have Leonard Peacock, Edom Knight, Ingimunder Gamal, Ives Peacock, um, and then Heath Dubois. And these men, so uh, both the Peacock sons are not in line for anything because Bendix is the next head of household. And then... Um, Edom is the eldest son uh, in his household, so he, but he's in a knight household. So yeah, he would be a knight, but um, that's as high as his status would go. Um, Ingemander, I'm so sorry, I can't, I'm so sorry about the pronunciation, um, is, is going to be the head of his household, but they don't have any titles or anything. And then obviously Heath is going to be the next marquee, so it's like a really big deal. Um, he is obviously the highest of status. And so I'm just introducing her to each of them. And so we're starting with Leonard. And so basically I took note of like whether they find each other attractive, whether uh, they have any, um, com, what's the word? 
compatibility um, and then whether or not they have good first impressions and then there are some crushes so first we started with Leonard and she did find him very attractive and she had a good first impression of him but he did not have a good first impression of her I have no compatibility anything people are going to freeze to death today can the king not die today I think you're supposed to die like in the next couple of years <laughs> but anyway so that's uh, the deal with Leonard. But then we have Edom here. So Edom, who is already flirty, um, he is going to be a knight. She finds him very attractive. They have good compatibility, and they both have good first impressions of each other. And then she gets a crush on him, you guys. So she has a crush on Edom Knight. So that is definitely a contender in her eyes. She also, like, I'm checking her whims and stuff, and maybe she's not such a good girl as I thought she might be. But I don't think she's, like conspiring like her mother is but she might be a little messy in the romance department so anyway uh that was Edom is so far like definitely has a lot going for him now that she has a crush on him and then um Injimunder <laughs> every time I say that I feel like I get embarrassed <laughs> um he is very attractive to her. No compatibility, but they had both had good first impressions of each other. So that is pretty good. I did want to have her dance with someone before the party ended. Like the party is already ending and we haven't even introduced ourselves to all of the guys. So that is just kind of tough for us. Anyway, then we introduce ourselves to Ives Peacock, who uh, she does find attractive, but not very attractive. And then she has a good first impression of him, but he doesn't have a great first impression of her. However, after they talk for a few minutes, he gets a crush on her. So even though he didn't have a good first impression of her, he got a crush on her very quickly. So I don't know about that, but uh, that is the, the next guy. So... I mean, she has good first impressions of literally everybody. I don't even know what that's about, but that's just the way it is. And then we're going to invite over Heath Dubois, who is obviously, like I said, the person her mom is rooting for. So you can see her mom is standing right here. She finds him very attractive, and she has a good first impression of him, but he doesn't have a good first impression of her, and they don't have any compatibility. There's no crushes. There's no anything. So obviously, the person that she likes most and gets along with most is Edom. Um, and then the second would be in, in, in the Gamal child. And, um, so they both have the best stats out of all of that. Um, but Edom, she has a crush on him, like, and they have good compatibility. I'm just saying, but anyway, I think that her mom is definitely pushing for her to talk to Heath a little bit more. So they are going to, um, you know, chat a bit and, We'll see. Uh, we'll have them have a little dance, but the party is over, so I am going to um, have them end the party here. I just wanted to make sure that she was able to dance with him because I'm sure that her mother would insist. So that's a deal with all the guys. Um, that is, it's a lot, right? <laughs> but uh, she enjoyed it. So I think that she really enjoyed it. And you can see that Ives is just hanging around. He has a crush on her now. Um, she wanted to flirt with someone, so I had her flirt. But then look, she got a whim to make Edom her boyfriend. So she wants to make Edom her boyfriend. So I think that that's really interesting. I mean, we kind of already knew that she was really into Edom the most. But just the fact that she got a whim to uh, have him be her boyfriend. And then she has a whim to kiss somebody. So I'm like, oh, gosh, girl are you gonna cause a scandal because she might because I don't know should we follow her whims I probably will uh, so she's talking to her mother after the party I also need Mortimer to bake a birthday cake for Percival uh, it is his birthday as we know that uh, he's supposed to die today but anyway so um, we have uh, her talking to her mother and her mother is basically like you know obviously for Heath and I know that this sounds a lot like what we did with Grace but also like Grace didn't have as much rebellion in her that I think that Isla does she is definitely like well I like Eden better and I'm gonna go I'm gonna court with him like she's not she's not really folding to her mother's stuff and I don't think that Mortimer is as involved in her stuff I think although Mortimer is does care a lot about like his children's marriages but I mean, he just met Isla, and though he will treat her just as well, um, you know, he's going to let her mother kind of handle her business. And so he will only get involved if he has to, which he might have to. So anyway, we're having Percival age up, and he is going to, we're going to have everyone have cake. Everyone gets a slice of cake. He rolled to be neat. So everyone gets a slice of cake before we, you know, kill him. <laughs> 
And since everyone keeps trying to freeze to death, I'm like, okay, well, I guess we'll just freeze him to death then. Maybe he was like outside playing in the snow and he like had gotten hurt and he couldn't, you know, get out of the cold and he got hypothermia or something. So um, I don't think, I know that Siobhan killed her last husband, but I don't think that she would kill one of the children, especially not the youngest, because like if she was going to kill anyone, like she would, she would be trying to get rid of the boy so that she could have a son. But, and I think that she recognizes that, but um, I don't think that she's, she's still trying to be on her best behavior, trying to show that she's a good mother and all this other stuff. And so because of that, um, I don't think that she would be responsible for that. I really do just think it was an accident. Grim, of course, is still not working. And so I think to myself, like, okay, well, should I just roll for him to see if he survives? And then as soon as I rolled for him, and honestly, like, we got a pretty good roll for him to survive. But then I was like, you know what? First off, I'm sick of Grim not working. I want to actually plead with Grim. I don't want to do this. And then secondly, I just, like, I got it in my head. I was like, well... Siobhan wants to have a baby like I think it would be really interesting if she had a child with Mortimer and so I'm like you know what I'm sorry Percival you only rolled neat it's not very interesting you don't have a personality yet like I kind of want Siobhan and Mortimer to have a baby with each other uh, while she's still young enough to and while the baby would still be old enough to not like be a super hassle being so much younger than everybody else so I was like well sorry Percy but I think we might say goodbye to you. <laughs> and that's just like my decision. You know, I'm the watcher. Um, I'm in charge. But I'm just, it's just annoying that Grimm doesn't work. And I think that it'll be more interesting than having Percival alive if we instead had a child with Siobhan. So that's what I'm going with. That is what I'm going with. Anyway, so um, I finally decide to reset him. We're going to set him up in the um, in the the basement with Lucius. That's, you know, honestly, like Mortimer, poor Mortimer. Like now he lost another one of his children. He had lost his wife. I think he's he might be getting kind of desensitized to it. Like I think that he's heartbroken over it. But like it just keeps happening. And I think that he really just like... I think that he is just wants to have so many kids because he thinks that like he'll keep losing kids. And if he keeps losing kids, then he will, um, you know, he just needs to keep having more so that if some of them will survive. And so I think that that's probably a reason why he would want to have children with Siobhan is because he's afraid that everyone around him is going to die. So he just has to keep making his family bigger and look at her face look at how excited she's so flirty and stuff and I'm like well she is definitely thinking about the fact that she could have a baby with him 100% that's what she's thinking and so we're gonna go give Cassandra a hug obviously she's so sad our little girl and so he is going to give her a hug and they're supportive how sweet is that and then I'm gonna have him go down into the basement so that he can mourn we'll grade the epitaph we will also then release the spirit we do all the mourning activities that are in this um event social event yeah anyway this is tough right this is tough so the dice have really not been kind to me today <laughs> I mean wow Luckily, Constance survived because they're, oh, no, wait, we still would have had Odalgard in the household. I was going to be like, oh, so they wouldn't have anyone in the household. Also, now Mortimer is flirty. I don't know. Anyway, so we are going to continue on with uh, Isla's stuff, and then everyone is just going to continue on working on their aspirations, working on their skills, working on, you know, the stuff that they, they have to work on. So there is that. Also, um... Oh, I think I showed you earlier and then I forgot about it afterwards is that um, we do have Catherine of Aragon. Um, I married her to Prince Arthur. We'll, we'll say that there was like a royal wedding or anything, but I don't really want to set up a royal wedding. So we'll say that there was one. She is now married to Arthur, even though he dies next year, which is super sad. So here's what I'm thinking is like, it must have been Henry VII that insisted his son marry his brother's widow then, because he was still alive at the time. So anyway, that's kind of a bummer though. Like her husband died the year after they got married like that. They didn't have any kids. Like, oh my gosh, what a hardship. Like, she she had a tough life, <laughs> that lady. Um, anyway, so 
We are going to be learning the etiquette skill. Siobhan is obviously pushing Isla to, you know, be a proper lady. She wants her to be a marchioness in the future. Nice drawing, Mortimer. Great job. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to have these two woohoo. We'll see if they get pregnant or not. I'm not, like, forcing it. I'm just going to have them woohoo. And whose bed is that? And then I realized that I only set beds for Gabriel and Cassandra, so I am going to uh, set him and Siobhan to the bed upstairs, and then we'll set this to Tobias's bed here. We have four children now, although I didn't actually, I didn't set one for Isla, but whatever, she's not going to, she's only going to be here for a short time, she's already a teenager, so she is going to, um, again, be studying the etiquette stuff, I do want her to, um, she wants to make Edom her boyfriend, so I'm like, you know what, let's do it, that doesn't mean that they're going to get married, but uh, it does, they'll court, you know, maybe, she will fall in love with him and want to be with him and her mother will cause problems or whatever. I don't know. But for right now, we are dealing with, with that. So anyway, we are going to just wait for the kids to go to school because I wanted them to go to school before we uh, had her go out on her date. So she's going to go on a date with Edom and we'll have her mom be the chaperone. Um, I think Siobhan will insist on, you know, watching closely over her daughter, especially her daughter wants to kiss somebody. Like she is definitely going to have to keep a close eye on Isla in order to make sure she doesn't cause any scandals. And I also think it's really interesting too, because so I was, I was thinking Isla was a good person, like, a good person compared to her mother, but it didn't really occur to me that she would be like, this romantic trait is wild because they are just really like, wow. <laughs> um, she just, she wants to kiss people. She wants to get boyfriends. She right off the bat, like she is ready to go and she knows what she wants. And I love that for you, Isla. I love that for you. So we are going to go to um, here and Lady Whistledown. Actually, even though we did a pretty good job on the coming out ball, Lady Whistledown said it wasn't that great, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, so we're going to go inside. We're going to go upstairs and we'll have them chatting and have him come up. And so main goal is to socialize with your date 10 times, although she does want to flirt with him three times. It'll be a little difficult with her mother in the room. Mortimer is also going to work. Everyone is off doing things. And she finds him very attractive, like, and he gets, she gets the feeling that he also finds her attractive. So they both find each other attractive, and um, they're just flirting, and he's flirty, and, you know, her mom kind of keeps getting up and, and leaving the room to go, like, get a drink, get this, get that, and so she is definitely taking the opportunity to, uh, you know, be a little more reckless than she should be, so um, let's keep flirting with him, and then uh, once we get that finished, okay, so drop a handkerchief is one of the tasks now, too, so then I'm thinking, okay, her mother went up and went to the bathroom, so um, oh, she came back. No, she went to go get a drink again. Um, anyway, so I'm going to have her mother get up and go to the bathroom and then they are going to sneak a little kissy kiss while she's gone. We'll see if, if anybody finds out about this. I don't, they shouldn't, but, um, things show up and whistle down regardless sometimes. So yeah, she has asked him to be her boyfriend and immediately after she asked him to be her boyfriend, she gets the whim to break up with him. How funny is that? So I think that she is really interesting too. She's like, wanted to kiss him, wanted to be his girlfriend, and then immediately is like, okay, I'm done with you now, but <laughs> we'll see where that goes. Um, so that is the end of the date. Wow. And so we are going to go home now and keep moving on. I think that, um, you know, Siobhan is probably hoping that, you know, she, Isla doesn't like Edom as much after having a date with him. And I think that she doesn't, but, um, I don't know. It's really interesting, isn't it? Like that she immediately wanted to break up with him, even though they have such good chemistry and everything. Like now she wants to break up. Um, so I think that that's interesting, but we'll come more back to that in the next, in the next year. That is not something that we need to worry about that much right now because we are just going to finish out the day and then I'm going to head out to do the maintenance stuff. So let's just do that. Also, I'll have you woohoo one more time. We'll see. She's not pregnant yet, but we'll see. Um, oh my gosh. And Heath called being like, oh, it's great that you and Edom are a thing. And it's like, oh, 
well, what if she wanted to be with you? <laughs> so anyway, um, I'll just have them do this. Well, okay, everyone is pretty set here. I wanted to finish up her this part of her aspiration as well. And then we'll start to get into the birthdays and the killings, which of there are many. Um, so I'm going to start killing people using um, the club because that is the easiest way to start doing it. So we'll do that. And um, so the people that died are Vivian Goth, Percival Larkin, Randolph Lan Landgrab III, Alexander Goth II, and Randolph Landgrab I and Pedro Marin the second so actually I forgot that Pedro was a second and not even that but like we went and looked at the family tree and stuff and I'm like wow Pedro you were quite the looker when you were younger but anyway so the the birthdays then are Princess Margaret who became a teenager Thora Knight who became a child Sophia Peacock who became a child Princess Mary, who became a child, and William Dockra II, who became a toddler. So everyone, um, those are all the birthdays, and things are moving along pretty well. Next year, let me check out what's going on next year. Next year, I believe, yeah, Prince Arthur dies. So that would put Henry into the position of next monarch. I wonder how Arthur died. Let's look this up. How did... Henry the seventh son Arthur die. He died, oh my gosh, of the sweating sickness. No way. Um okay. It says the lack of male heir old enough to take the throne weakened his rule, particularly given England's bitter recent history of competing claims to the throne. Oh my gosh, okay. But yeah, so he died and Henry was still young. He's still a child, so um that put them in a tough position. And then next, okay, so anyway, so Arthur is supposed to die next year. Also, we have Eleanor becoming a child, hopefully. Cassandra becoming a teenager, hopefully, and rolling whether or not she's going to marry. So, oh my gosh, the only birthdays next year are ours. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. We're going to be fine. We're going to do great. I am excited for the future, and I hope that, you know, things go well in our family. We'll see whether or not they have a baby. What if they have a son? What if more kids die? I don't know. So many things could happen. It's really, really interesting to me. So I hope that you guys are excited about that, and I will catch you in the next one.